vending machines. Surely no sane man would make the main antagonist of his game a wonderfully convenient dispenser of delicious snacks, right? WRONG! A vending machine is in fact not wonderful, nor is it convenient. They are natural born predators, and not the type that you see at the Oscars. Did you know that vending machines kill more people a year than sharks? No, neither did I, but this information just begs so many questions. Like, how does someone actually die to a vending machine? Is it a workplace accident? Electrical faults? I reckon that the vending machines being charged in these murder cases most likely got possessed by a upper rank demon like Belial and lured some weak poor old lady into an alley with his delicious snacks and proceeded to bludgeon her to death. A very reasonable conclusion, I think. So to follow that reasonable line of thought, I've decided to make a game about this exact theory. A game where you, the protagonist, is hunted by a vending machine. So to do this, I first learnt how to model realistic game objects <laughs> by following this tutorial. Then I made this vending machine. It's beautiful. Then I added some creepy eyes on the back, some radioactive snacks of course. And there we go, we have an applicant for the SCP database. Brilliant. I then made this rake model. It doesn't work in Unity for some fucking reason. And I can't figure out. No, no, my original idea obviously wasn't to make a really cool multiplayer horror game about the rake, no. And it didn't get cut short by the fact that this model doesn't work for no known reason. No, no, I'm definitely not just settling for a game about a vending machine. It's not, <laughs> it's not what's happening. It's not what's happening. This isn't, that's not the case. So stop saying it. Stop. I'm really getting on my nerves now. All right. So I created this loop as practice, then went on to draw a layout for my main building. And I finished that up too. I wanted to make it slightly confusing to traverse and have lots of long corridors and turns. Because those things are creepy, you know. Like what's over there at the end of that corridor? Something waiting? Is it a vending machine? A little goblin? Something luring me? Something something waiting there around the corner? When I prepare for Mortal Kombat, everyone's go, oh, but the alien's gonna wipe you out. No, that's the part you don't get. They won't. I would win. Now. This game is my first ever jump into creating 3D assets. I didn't want to use asset packs because they wouldn't teach me the intricacies of how to make games look good. I actually learned a surprising amount by doing this. I set out to make a bunch of generic props, you know, doors, tables, chairs, anything you'd find in like an office style space. Like all that shit. And by doing this, I actually learned that I don't like making game assets. I can't lie, it's actually rewarding once you sort of start to put it all together. Which I did by first plopping the basic layout into Unity, giving it some high quality materials for the walls, floors and ceilings and all of that. And then I populated it all with the furniture I made. Oh, and if you're wondering, I used 3ds Max to do the modeling before moving to Blender because 3ds Max is rubbish, allegedly. Can I be sued for saying- nah, it's just- it's just a review, right? Yeah, 3ds Max sucks. And then I'd throw the models I made into Substance Painter to uh, add some beautiful procedural materials. I love Substance Painter. I love Substance Painter because it lets you add dirt and dust to your models, which makes it look really realistic. And old. But unfortunately, it is made by Adobe, so the subscription fee is roughly 300 thousand newborn children per summer solstice. <laughs> I'm running out of kids, man. Anywho, here's the map. This baby can fit so much bending machine in it. <clears throat> Fuck yeah. I mean, it kind of it kind of is ugly, but that's because there's no lights. Oh yeah, we got clappers installed in here. Unity also offers some nice effects known as post-processing effect effects. That would just make it look creepier. We can use fog, we've got static grain, screen space reflections, which is like ray tracing if it had no limbs. Still pretty good. No hate to anyone without limbs out there, it's just, you're not gonna be, you know what, I'm just not even gonna touch that. Yeah, I'm gonna just click all of those. I mean, I've got 30, 70, I can do what I want. And then finally, here's Pablo Chocolate Bar, our evil antagonist, just sitting there. Menacingly. All very exciting stuff, isn't it? But yeah, I like to start games with like the maps and some of the arts, art stuff because I find programming a game that's just grey cubes to me brain frobbingly boring. So now I have a great liminal space. Currently Jenga makes for a better game than this. So let's move on to the next section, shall we? Shall we? Should we move on to the next section? Hey! Excuse me.
<laughs> programming time. Everybody, put your thinking caps on, because it's time to program. Let's go. Oh, I'm colour coordinated. Look at this. I'm not sure about this colour. I feel like I look a bit scrotal. Like the tip of a pin. Anyway, what's first on this list? First person movement controller because if you're playing a game, you're gonna to wanna to be able to move about. So to program a first person controller, all you have to do is walk on over to the Unity Asset Store, like so. And yoink. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Catch you later, nerd. <laughs> Skadoosh! And uh, then uh, we'll just. Oh yeah, no, that's uh, that's uh, that looks like gameplay if I've ever seen it. That is proper good stuff. Oh, what was that? Oh, you don't think that's programming? Well, I don't think I like your tone, buddy. <laughs> hi, howdy, hi. I'm here now at my desk. I'm gonna talk from here. Bored of setting up my green screen. I'll do that later. Two seconds later. I decided to make the main gameplay loop a really simple but repetitive task. And that task is essentially going around the place, hiding and fixing things as the ghosts inhabiting it. Just fuck it up, you know? Just really get in there and just. <laughs> but the player actually needs an incentive to go around and do something kind of mundane like tidying. So I decided to sort of link the level of orderliness of the place to the level of aggression from the monsters, ghouls, ghosts, vending machines. So I'm hoping that making the player balance going around, fixing light bulb, putting chairs in the right places with actually just survival should hopefully make things really stressful. And then that will also hopefully make the game more scary, I guess. As for the nitty gritty on how I'm doing this though, you might want to get a pen and pencil out because it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of talking. Don't worry, I'll, I'll flash up lots of pictures. I might put Subway Surfer down at the bottom just so you can stay entertained while I talk about this. So with any good horror game, you need a flashlight. I wanted to just take it a few notches further to improve the flashlights because a lot of these games, they just seem to have this beam flying out of your forehead. That's not how it works in real life. If you walk around a dark forest, which I've done many a time, don't ask why. It's in your hand, it's not detached. You're looking here, the light's over there, you're sort of looking around, you're just, you're just throwing that shit everywhere. So that's what I tried to do. So I started off, I made the F key change the state of the light from on to off. The mouse wheel changed the radius and range of the flashlight. I also added some animation to make everything more realistic. I did this with a animation curve, which you can actually just change whenever you want, which is really handy. And this animation curve sort of, based on whether you're standing, running or walking, it will have a different animation and it's all done on the fly. It's not like I actually animated anything. I just changed this curve and it will change the way it moves. Finally, I made the flashlight have a slight delay between where the player turns. So if you turn left, the flashlight will uh, follow slightly after to really emphasize that it's in your arm and it's not coming out of your eyeball because that's not where flashlights come from. I was also actually inspired by Cold War Zombies because I was just playing on, who knows what the maps are actually called these days. There was just loads of dust everywhere and you see it with your flashlight and I thought it looked really cool and I was like, that's easy. All I've got to do is get a picture of a white circle and just spawn it everywhere around the player. So that's what I did, just dust all around the player constantly. So you might want to bring some nasal spray to this game because it's going to smell like a charity <laughs> shop. But currently it's a bit boring, so I wanted to work with the lighting and the jump scares a bit more. So I created a light bulb manager script, which holds every electronic object in the game and gives it a state. Working, flickering, broken, on, off. This way I can really easily create events that can scare the player or become a task. For example, uh, this one shuts off everything until the player finds the fuse box and replaces the fuse. I also plan on making the ghosts angrier when all the lights are off because I'm just a bad person. And then I created a few more events. There's one that just spazzes out every light in the building. I like that one the most. It looks really creepy. I might do that when you're getting chased or when your sanity is just like. <laughs> um, I also had like break a random bulb and set a random bulb to flickering. So I can give that event to the ghost and based on maybe whatever level of aggression they're at, they can uh, decide to destroy more bulbs or whatever or make your life harder. You don't want that, it gets dark real quick. But for another layer of polish on top of that, because the lighting looks pretty good, the atmosphere is kind of there, it's missing 
producing good sound effects. So I bought a license to Epidemic Sound to get some nice high quality stuff um, without having to whip out my microphone every two minutes and just start moaning into it or like tapping metal pans around the house, you know what I mean? Got some high quality sound effects, like some heavy breathing for when you're running, heartbeat sound that will increase when your sanity decreases, and good footsteps, door slams, buzzing lights, flickering lights, and some fantastic sounds for the vending machine, such as... I mean, I was just pooping my pantyhose just listening to those at like two in the morning. <laughs> anyway, I feel like all this talking is getting a bit boring, so probably to cover the rest of the gameplay design in another video if you want me to. Also, if you have any ideas of like features I could add or anything like that that you think would be creepy, changes to make to env the environment, missions, objectives, jump scares, literally comment it down below because certain things it won't take me long to add because the foundation's already there. If it's a good idea, I'll put it in, and if it's a bad idea, how dare you?